Blazing. Blazing. Flame. Flame. Radio. radio yeah, that's right. Radio. You tuned in to Blazing Flame Radio. It's your boy Dub, the host, at Dub216 on IG. I had an interview with my man CPO, OG of the West Coast. If you ain't hip, man, y'all need to do your homework, man. He's been around for a while. First artist signed to MC Ren. Also was on Death Row. Man, take a listen to this interview. You do not want to miss it. You tuned in to the best. Blazing. Blazing. Flame Radio. Flame. Flame Radio. Blazing Flame Radio. Throwback Thursday. That was that Project Pat featuring Pimp C. Rest in peace, Pimp C. I promised y'all an interview with my man CPO, Boss Hall. Man, I will not lie to y'all. Studio audience, put your hands together for the OG. How you feeling, fam? I'm good, man. How you doing? Man, I feel blessed, brother. Blessed. Glad to be talking to you. Real talk, man. Real talk. Oh, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. I wanted, I wanted to give you um, give you the floor, man, to let let everybody know who you are, man, and um, what you brought to this game and what you're doing right now, man. seen the game at its purest form from from the from the eyesight from the vision sight that that most of us dreamed the real talk man can you can you just just speak on that man because i i, I look at at that form of uh of, of hip-hop man is like the heightened man you know what i'm saying y'all y'all artists man y'all y'all took it to a to a level where we all related and and, and was like you know living life through y'all videos and shit real talk you know what i'm saying So coming up in the game, bro, who who were your influences, man? Who did you listen to? You know what I'm saying? Before you before you decided you wanted to grab the pen and, and, and do this. Um, mostly the people that that I just mentioned, KLS One, Okay, Jack D, Run DMC. Um, but 
true that's very true man so it's a lot of a lot of mimics like everybody mimicking somebody else and seem like man trying to get a sound a certain sound they go for you know seems like what they yeah, mass well. that's what they promote and put out the most that's what they do like it seemed like they flood the the radio airways with that you, you know what i mean to get that money. They're getting them dollars, man. Pretty much. They're yeah, they don't really care about... They, they literally do not care about the art. And I see a lot of people who call themselves artists. Right. Right. And, I, and, and it comes to this. An artist can be recognized. Period. Mm. You know, uh, I can recognize... Uh, I can recognize... Uh, Da Vinci, I can recognize Renoir, I can recognize, you know, Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. I can't recognize people who paint just like. Tracing. If you paint like everybody else is painting, I don't know what the hell you, I don't know who you are. They just you know trace, I mean? they tracing each other. Right, they're not really, they're not, they're not technically recording artists. Right. They're recording, yes, you know what I mean? But an artist is just that, you're an artist. You have your way of doing things, your method of doing things. You're saying, you know what I mean? When I hear it, I know that's you. Yeah. I know that's you. Right. Not just through your voice, because it's style. Yeah. That's JRS1 style. That's blah, blah, blah style. That's Kendrick Lamar style. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm not getting enough of that anymore. No, we're just not getting it anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, I mean, a lot of folks that's way tight, they're rhythmic, they're smooth, but to me, it doesn't sound like it. So I give it up for the people who actually sound like individuals. Those people, I give large credit to everybody else. Catch up. I hear that 100%, man. Um, on this station, man, we have a lot of uh, independent artists, some up-and-coming artists, man. They they really, um, you know, they listen to, to these interviews. They try to get an insight and some inspiration from you. You know, it's kind of hard sometimes on an indie level with uh, trying to promote yourself and, and being accepted. Yeah. Uh, in your city and stuff like that, man. Any any words that you can that you can give to him? You know, like the thing is, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put this on Macklemore. <laughs> I'll put you this way. Um, you know how everybody? Well, you know what? Let's leave it for a minute. Let's, I'm gonna use iTunes. Everybody 
everybody put their stuff on iTunes, right? Mm -hmm. You want to get my stuff, it's on iTunes. You want to get my stuff, it's on, you know, people like iTunes, Amazon, all the well-known things. But you got to remember iTunes and Amazon and all those sites didn't always exist. That's true. They, they, they came out and everybody started. Here's my thing. And I, I hate to put it on this level, but I know people from the streets can get this. If you have dope, okay, uh -huh. think of your music as dope. If you got dope, are you going to give your dope to the guy across the street so he can sell it, get, what, 40% of it, and then give you 60 bucks and he got 40 bucks, or just sell it yourself and get 100 bucks? You did? I get that 100%. You don't need to send people to iTunes. You can send people. People don't care where they download it from as long as they download it. Right. Send it to your site. You know, right. if you, you know, whatever your name is, your name at blah, 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 dot com. Mm. Send them to you. I mean, because the same way that all those people can promote your thing, you can promote it. It used to be the underground, but the underground is now um, the site. Uh -huh. You know, it's Twitter, it's, it's Instagram, uh -huh. it's, you know, um, Facebook. And if people forget, the thing is, usually us, and what I mean by us is I mean this culture, this lots of black people, lots of young people, mm -hmm. they tend to be on just a few sites. They tend to be on you know, Twitter and they're on Facebook and they're on Instagram mostly. But mm -hmm. there are so many other sites out there yep. that thousands of people are on. They promote your stuff everywhere you can. Yeah. Everywhere you can because all that's potential money. Mm -hmm. You know, all that's potential exposure. So, I mean, you know, promote your stuff daily. You have to remember if, if you set up all day to day and every hour today you promote your stuff, that's great. Yeah. But people are going to join those sites, even if you just do those, you know, those three sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Even if you just did those three, there are people joining those sites every single day. That's true. Thousands of people who did not see you promote yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to flood it. You really got to keep yourself in people's faces. That's how, that's how everybody else does. Yeah. That's what the neighbors do. You can do this all day. Yeah. It doesn't cost you a cent. You right about so that, man. Start there. You definitely right you know, about I mean, that. It, it really is about belief. Do you believe that you can do that? Cool, because if you believe that a stand that somebody's doing, beg them to do your shit. Well, I mean, you know, you're never gonna make it. Man. So yeah, it comes to that. Hey, that's definitely what's up, man. Hey, um, we got we got a couple tracks over here, man. Let let me know which uh which one you want me to spin. Oh my god. Okay, I need them. You got them. Huh? I know, I know which one I want to spend, man. Tell me about this day boogie, man. Yeah. <laughs> I know you say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what my boy Kill for CMW, man. You know, uh, him and my boy, uh, actually my brother, uh, Boogie, Andre Boogie, he's the one that, those two guys are the ones that basically produce, they're producing the majority of this new album we're doing. Okay. And that's where the cuts are. Um, so, you know, it's me and him on there and, just doing what we're doing the rest, having fun, you know, doing things and shit. That's what I was to bring back, you know, distinctive music. It's not, it's, it's not trap music. I don't, I'm not really big on trap music. I don't, you know, I don't really sound so great doing that, I think. So, this is just me doing it. We're going to go into this, we're going to go into the day boogie. Let's get into it. Let's play the flame radio. Let's spin your shit. We're Compton at, yeah. We're Compton at, we're Compton at, we're Compton at. What? What? We're Compton at, where you at, baby? We're Compton at, where you at, baby? We're Compton at. It's Bob J in the bar, drinking up the bar, big blowing on floor. Which one of your fake ass dimes gonna get it off? Hit the blunt and watch the crowd around before I call. Gangsta, gangsta, your boy goes off. Remember me the first OB to the G With the blue tape from the CPT I'm still most wanted Gotta keep a G-Dog on it I'm on it Push through the club with my brain on it Little bad little chick with ass and hips Caught your boy eye and I'm do or die And sharp like a razor Far from a hater Jumped on the floor, bust the cold one too Grinding on baby, she grinding me too That's one day and the whole club to go I don't want the bad chick, I want the baddest call Now games don't stop don't talk little shit. They might she want a little bit, but they for sure don't get on the floor and shake their pants. They don't make it. They don't dance. They hit the lift, put the cash on top. Tell them get switched, put the ass on top. And don't make a move. 
without plans. Cause is a rookie and gangsta do not dance. Hog at the party, aim in the dough. Bro got the motherfucking frame in the dough. Don't make me show you how I flip on folks. So fetch me a motherfucking drink and blow smoke. I get respect cause motherfuckers know I ain't bullshitting out like I'm on the floor. I'm so much a fucking fool with it. Smash through, stepping on niggas' shoes and it cool with it. Don't put your woman no lie. Birds ain't safe with the fact that pimpers on the block. Boy, you should've put your chickens in the coop. Cause you're not about to swoop and scoop the whole fly. Delicious. Big check. Put me in the trance. Said, Mama wanna see, baby, dance. Told her I'll blow these fucking trees. Drink this floor. But get on the floor and shake my ass. Hey, dude. Now, gangsta, don't stop. Don't quit. Don't talk little shit. They might she want a little bit. But they for sure don't get on the floor and shake their pants. In the paws and fear. Who got the biggest fucking balls in here? Fat fuck. In a funky lack truck with the shit that costs on it. Lights is placing balls on it. This brand fucking new out the box. And I love how the speakers fucking knock. When I'm beating up your block, but I don't rock, rock, roll, roll, skate or bounce. When I'm foot long blunt, when I eat the balance. On a third mission, leave Nick Dre and chill. Snatch a bitch, bitch, make a daddy pay the bill. Roll a note and hold him if you want him to survive. Y'all work 12 million crack hustle and five. Fucking bitch. A gangster, do what it takes to get his motherfucking hands on the cake. And fuck it, if he can't get paid, he going for damn sure get him some fucking cookies. And thanks to not dang. They book out gangs, don't stop, don't quit, don't talk little shit. They might she walk a little bit, but they for sure don't get on the floor and shake their pain. They don't make they don't gain. They hit the lift, put the cash on top. And um, hit the switch, put the ass on top. And don't make a move without plan. Cause the switch is the rookie, and gangs do not dance. Hey, Boogie, radio, 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 man, CPO, oh, it's yeah. hard, man, that's West Coast for real, bro, I like that. Ah, uh, yeah, man, you know, we wanted to bring back that, we're not hearing enough, enough West West, so yeah, we want to do some real West, that's return to the G, that kind of shit. That's what's up, man, we we um kind of like extended our conversation um off air about our feeling as far as the um the direction of hip hop and, and not being, um, uh, individualized anymore, man. Because I remember at one point, you know, hip hop had several different mega stars or, or or mega teams, and they all was different. You had your Rough Riders, they had their certain style. You had Outkast, they had their certain style. You had the West Coast, y'all exactly. y'all whole y'all whole style was like y'all had a whole coach. You know, y'all style was y'all had a lot of niggas wanting to do the west coast thing man way over here in the cold ass 216 you know what i'm saying so it was very influ influential you know what i'm saying so a a a looking at it in that way man how everybody had their own thing and they did their own thing and was was popping at that and then looking at it now where it seems like you got a lot of people who sound similar even if they don't sound similar they even have a track where they do that they you know what i'm saying they do that flow it, it's crazy, right. man. It's, well, you know, it's, it's the thing is, it's, it's like I said, you know, people um, listen to who's popular, and they like who's popular. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It, it, we've always done that. Um, I'll put it to you this way. When I first started out, my, <clears throat> my favorite people to listen to were maybe Chuck D. My favorite people to, to try and sound like was Chuck D and Chuck Rock. And Ren used to be in my ass constantly. Um, I used to love the way Chuck said things, He's, you know, and I used to do it just like him. And I, you know, trying to do that. He was like, dude, stop doing, stop trying to sound like Chuck D. I was like, yeah, but really, it's tight. That nigga tight. He said, yeah, but he's doing that. Yeah. We don't need another, you know, he's already doing that. Uh, when I went to death row and Dre was like, don't be in here talking about, you know, you know, eating bodies and caskets and blah, 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 blah. I already got somebody who's doing that. He's talking about RDX. But, mm. Okay. You know, the, the thing is, it, I mean, I, 
put you this way. If you had a potluck, you don't put all the same, you don't put all the same stuff from everybody on the same plate. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So that's what, I mean, it's, I, there's nothing wrong with liking somebody who's popular. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to rap like someone who's popular. That's a natural thing. It's natural. The problem is that that person already sounds like that. So mm-hmm. even if you come out, even if you're tight, super tight at that style, you know, you're not really going to get recognition. People are going to be like, he tight, he sounds just like such and such. Do you really want to sound just like somebody? Right. Because and- they already sound like that. You know, and the, the thing is, if somebody came out right now sounding like Tupac, well, you know, unfortunately, Tupac is no longer with us. That's a piece. And so they too. might accept that person. But if Pac was on the scene right now, and if somebody came out sounding like Pac, they could hang it up. You're right, you man. You know, they're going to get clowned for, for trying to sound like Pac. You might get clowned now for trying to sound like Pac. So, you know, don't come out sounding like Pac. You know, don't do that. Don't come out sounding like Kendrick Lamar. Don't come out sounding like, you know, whomever else it is. Do you, you know, that's popular. Don't do that. Be yourself. Do you feel that the you know, the, the lack of uh okay, I'm sorry. no no you good? Do you feel that the lack of of um artist development plays a big factor in this? What artist development? That, that's what I'm saying. No no no. What I'm saying is for, as far as like artist development was 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 a big thing back then. Like no, I'm agreeing with you. Oh oh I'm okay. With you that, yeah, it, it, it's it's precisely that. I mean, which you, you're gonna need somebody to tell you these things. You know, you're gonna need somebody inside the company. We said, you know, you sound great, but, mm. uh, and I mean, the thing is, uh, I, I, hey, if, <clears throat> if you're listening to someone and you're sounding like that person, it, 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 it can't be that you don't know you do, right. you know what I mean? But if you don't, then somebody in that company should, should pull your coattails and you know what, you really do sound great. I had a homie that when he first came out, he was super tight, but he sounded just like Ice T. He actually sounded better than Ice T to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, as, as it was, I mean, because the thing about IT was, he had his sound, but my, my voice sounded, his voice was just like he. But he was more rhythmical here. And that's what I said, Nikki, you sound like a hard beat IT. Oh. So, um, which was sort of a compliment, but the right. thing is, dude, IT is already big. It's not going to work for you. And I said, and what I do is, I'm never trying to discourage anyone. I'm always trying to encourage people. Because if you got it, you got it. You know what I mean? And if you were capable of sitting down and you have a gift where you're able to get down, you know, to, to a beat, to rhythm, whatever it is, beautiful. So if you're capable of doing that, then you're capable of, you know, having your own style. Right. Everybody, you know, there's too many people out there who do it, and you can certainly do it too. Um, and, my, you know, he went off. He, I, the way I tell people all the time is if you're serious about your craft, mm. then you'll take heed of what I'm saying. Okay. And he went off, he came back about, you know, two, three months later, and he didn't sound nasty like I see. He was super tight, he had his own voice, he wasn't trying to sound like nobody, and he was super funky. That's what's and up, I said, man. said, now that's you. When I hear you now, you don't sound like I see. you sound like you, you know? And so that's pretty artist development could still be a part of it. Uh, but again, a lot of people don't sign the company, so, you know, they just, they record at home. Uh, Green used to always tell me, don't listen to your homies. Your homies will lie to you. Well, that's not necessarily the truth. But often it is. Often often it is the case. Your homies sometimes don't want to hurt your feelings. You know what I mean? You're their homie. They don't want to say something to discourage you. Right. Um, so, you know, they don't really tell you the truth. And then again, maybe your homies got the same ears you do. And so they, they're incapable of hearing you. Um, so it, 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 this really is an art, you know, it's a craft, and, and you really have to be serious about it. You can't just spit there and that's it, and it's not that simple, and mm. too many people think that it is. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I'll put it this way, do you want to rap or do you want to sell records? Which one do you want to do? Right. You know what I mean? Because anybody can rap, yeah. anybody can sell records. That's true, man. And that's the guy's honest truth, you dig? So that's very it comes true. to that. You got, um, let, let everybody know how they can get in contact with you on social media and stuff like that, man. Shout out your social media. I'm a football hole everywhere. Yeah. Uh, on, let's see, on, on um, Instagram, it's at CPO Balls Hall. 
on Twitter. It's at Vince Edwards 9, or you put in CPO and post all it'll come out. Uh, you know, you'll pop up. Or the Facebook, you put Vince Edwards and CPO and post all it'll all come out. What's up, man? When you, when you did the, um, when you did a track with Pac, man, y'all was in the studio together? Yes, sir. Man, how was, how was that experience, man, working with Pac? <laughs> um, very cool. Pac, you know, the thing about Pac is he's extremely, he was extremely polite. He really was. I mean, you know, very hospitable. Um, because when I called him up, well, I didn't expect him to be there. I didn't know he was going to. Mm. I just happened to call the studio and he was there. And I said, well, you know, we went to Oscar. Because, you know, it just happened to be a, the day before that I had been listening to some of music and thinking it would really be cool if I could do a song with him. But I was just, it was a daydream. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't serious. I, not, I mean, I was serious that it would be great, but I certainly didn't have any, you know, expectations. But, um, but when he was there the next day, I was like, I have too much of a question. So, you know, he got on the phone, he invited me up. And, uh, he was just really cool. I'm, I'm walking around the studio and he's smoking like a train. I'm, uh, sitting around like a train and I'm drinking and got a blunt bottle. All I got is drinking each hand and, and a blunt. And it was just a really cool working environment, you know, <laughs> if you want to call it that. And, uh, and he's very, you know, steadfast about his work ethic. That's the thing I like about Pop. Uh, uh, I can equate him with Trey on that. That Trey is really, being on his work ethic, just to sit and watch the work, is huge. And Pac is much like that. Yeah, he was, you know, he's very serious about what he's doing. He's walking over, looking at, you know, what Pac is right. He's walking over to you and right. And, you know, he's just into it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, he was literally into it. I mean, he's literally sure what you got. And, you know, that is your age. And, uh, but I wanted him to interact with me. And that's the reason why he and I are both doing my verse. Because mm-hmm. I didn't just want to do a verse on pop shit. Right. I wanted he and I to do a verse together. Right, right. And that's between them. I think that's that's yeah. very important though, man. The energy you get from being in the in the studio with somebody versus just Absolutely. doing it. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally. Um, a lot of times, for me, the majority of the time I write, I write alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, being, I realize I, I have to be reminding myself. That when I'm in the studio with people, we're talking, we have conversations. A lot of conversations make you think about lyrics. Okay. You can't help it. You talk to somebody, they did something funny. Somebody did something, you know, that's, that made sense. And the next thing you know, you write something like that, you teach lyrics. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you're incorporating all that energy, all that conversation. And that's what happens when you're in the studio with somebody who's got a real work ethic, who's like, they're not sitting around playing, they're not here joking and laughing, they're working. You know, it, it makes you work too. So, that's, that's, I mean, when I'm in the studio, I don't have it. If you're not supposed to be there with me, if you don't have a purpose in being there, then you're not there. Mm. And, and, you know, I don't have folks hanging out in the studio. It was pretty cool people hanging out. Because I couldn't take you to work with me, and this is what I call work, this is my job. Mm. I don't take homies to my job. You know what I'm saying? I feel so, that. I feel that 100%. That's, that's my thing. He did. So, I mean, because I approach his business. And, um, you know, and that's how he does it. I mean, you know, he approaches it as a business. And so, that's why his stuff came out right. He did. Right. Real talk. Man, that's some dope insight, man. That's definitely some dope insight. Knowing, knowing you've been in the game, man, you've been doing this for a long time, man. What... What inspires you to, to keep doing it? You know what I'm saying? What what makes you ha- still have that fire to hit the studio and drop them bars, man, and, and put that shit down? Um, seriously, the music. Uh, uh, I mean, literally the tracks. Sometimes I'll hear a track and just be like, ooh, I'll kill that track. Mm-hmm. I love the next track. Mm-hmm. And you just want to write something to it just to see what you would come up with. Right. Um, uh, have you ever seen the, um, the commercial out? They play a thousand, thousand times a day for the gear, the watch, uh, for uh, the S2, the gear watch. It's playing Hermitude, uh, the Buzz. The Buzz? That track is... Huh? I'm listening. I was listening to you. Uh, that track is funky. And when I heard it, I was like, ooh, that's fun. You know, so when I hear tracks like that, when I hear tracks that are really tight, um, the first thing 
I want to do is, you know, <laughs> blow something. And then once I'm in an elevated mode, you know, see what I can come up with. So it's, it's actually been music for me. But it's fun. It really is fun. Um, I, I usually have no idea what I'm going to write before I write something. Mm-hmm. I let the track tell me what I'm going to write. Uh-huh. And so for me, the motivation is just to, you know, I, I want to see what's going to come out on the other end. And I can't do it unless I write. So okay. that's what keeps me in it. All right, knowing we spoke on how we spoke on how we feel as far as hip hop um, nowadays versus hip hop, which I feel in its in its in its greatest form was in the in the eighties and nineties and stuff like that, because that was my my height era with it. Um, is it anybody that that's out now that you would would, would like to collab with or work with? Um, the people who I would work with right now aren't aren't being heard. They aren't really being publicized, so there's, I mean, I could see their names, but no one would know who they were, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, right now, I'm really much more apt to, to work with people who aren't being heard, mm. who I know for a fact are tight, you know what I mean? Okay. Just, I mean, people who, me and you don't even know them yet, you know what I mean? Right. I, I get people all the time who slide me tracks and let me listen to stuff, and sometimes I get stuff that's like, shit, you got it. Right. You know, that's the kind of person that I want to come out, that I want to be heard. I hear you. Um, but the majority of people who I want to work with are like people you already know from back in the day, East Siders. I went to some the most gangster group I I know for me is East Siders. I love Trady and Ghost. Yeah. I would love to do something with them. Um, and just, you know, again, in chill, doing some stuff, uh, something with him and maybe eight. I, King T, DOC, mm. uh, just, I mean, the people who, who, you know, I love. I, what I really need to do and want to do, and we've already talked about it, is me and Rand doing something else. So, you know, that's something I want to get done. Yeah, that would be dope. That would definitely those be Those are folks that I really want to work with. That's dope, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you calling in for this interview, man. I know you got your session set up and things like that. I don't want to hold you too long, man. But I got this super... Again, man, I appreciate you having me. I really do. I got this super gangster, man. Tell me about that track, man. Uh, yeah. Super Gangster is real cool for me because my brother did that track, Bogey did that track, and it's me and Flip the Ball, and anybody who wants to know who that is, that's the young gentleman I did a cut with uh, on the Murder Was K soundtrack called The Eulogy. Okay. Because <laughs> um, he was about maybe 15 when we did that cut, and so, you know, all that time went by, and we've been wanting to do another song together for a long time, so my boys slipped him in the studio one day, and we just like, you know what, give me a track. And uh, as soon as he heard it, he was like, that one. And it just so happened that I used to say this word, super gangster, all the time. And it was interesting because he just happened to be writing a song called Super Gangster already. Mm. And he was working on an album called Super Gangster already. So it was all super gangster out. So, you know, we just went on ahead and did this cut. And uh, I like the way it came out because it's different. That's what's up, man. We'll probably introduce it, man. I'm about to spin it. Thank you, I appreciate it. This is Super Gangster. We're going to slip the phones and keep your boss on West Coast. Hold on. Lazy, lazy. Let's play radio. Radio. Black Manta, I'm a tarantula from Gargantua. Gargantua. King Kong, stomping on Hong Kong. Be that now, my nigga, it's the bomb. King Kong, the bomb, like Cheech and John. Back in that ass with a brand new song. I break the balls, bitches on my balls. From the Golden Gate Bridge to the Taj Mahal. I'm 118 feet tall. Tower Bing, y'all a puppet all. Yes, y'all. Slick a pawn, it's a baboon to the moon. Coach on the spoon in the bathroom. The creature from the black lagoon. The rhythm of my soul hits you with the hard hoes. I'm created a monster. Jimmy Harper, Godzilla versus Barbara. Gangster. 
With your fucking guard down Cause we be shooting up shit Better learn to duck quick These super gangsters They just ain't the one to fuck with It don't quit Niggas quit the bullshit Push dope before we don't blow Fuck the bullshit If we see the fucking lit We gon' hit it Hit it Like a pimp told a trick Ain't no calling in sick Bitch All we do is get it Get it All we do is get it Get it All we do is get it Get it Get that shit All we do is get it Get it All we do is get it Get it, all we do is get it, get it, get that song We do get it, get it, we do get it, get it, we do get it, get it, we get that song We do get it, get it, do get it, get it, get it, do get it, get it, get it, get it, get that shit